Hello everyone, it's Vince the Longineer here. So the results are in on the soil test I did last week. In this video, I'll dive into the results and discuss my plan forward to address the deficiencies, so stay tuned. So I mailed my soil test on July 28th from Pennsylvania and it was delivered just three days later on the opposite side of the country in Washington State. Three days after that, my results were ready, so let's dive in. After logging in, I see that my soil test is completed. If I click here, I'm presented with the results page. On the left side is a graphical representation of the analysis for each of the macro and micronutrients, as well as the pH. To the right is a tabular breakdown of the raw soil data that indicates the results for each nutrient, the corresponding optimal range, and the rating of low, optimal, and high. From here, I can immediately see that my pH is low, so one of my action items will be to add lime in the fall. I have clay soil, which tends to be on the acidic side, so this is not a surprise to me. The last time I applied lime was about five years ago, so these results support the need to add more lime. I'm going to go with calcitic lime since it's got plenty of calcium and does not take as much to raise the pH as it would with dolomitic lime. I'm probably going to go with a product like Solucal. Now, I'm also low on sulfur, and this sort of puts me in a catch-22 situation. That's because sulfur lowers pH, and I don't want to do that. I am more concerned about getting the pH in the optimum range, so for now, I'm going to ignore the sulfur. I'm also low on the three primary macronutrients, which are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. I had a feeling that I would be low on these nutrients. Back in early March was the last time I applied starter fertilizer with sufficient amounts of each of these nutrients. Ever since then, I've only applied Melorganite, which is a slow release product and only has 6% nitrogen, 4% phosphorus, and 0% potassium. I have also made one application of Air 8 and 002 Microgreen from the next product line available through the Green County Fertilizer Company. Air 8 contains 5% potassium, and 002 microgreen contains 2% potassium. I'm pretty good on micronutrients with the exception of boron. I actually just applied a product called Bountiful Harvest after taking my sample. It contains 0.03% of boron. It's not much, but you really don't need that much. What I was most surprised about was seeing iron levels on the low side. That's because I've made three liquid iron applications this season, and have made quite a few applications of melorganite, which contains iron as well. I've also made an application of 002 microgreen, which also contains iron. I'm not too concerned with this and don't plan to change much with my iron schedule. One thing that's very useful for DIYers is that this test in particular makes recommendations to real products that you can apply to your yard. As you can see here, they are giving me granular and liquid recommendations. This is really convenient because it takes the guesswork out of interpreting your results. There are also convenient links directly to the recommended products that make it very easy to buy. So in summary, I'll be taking the following action items. I'll be applying some lime. I'll apply a well-rounded fertilizer, something with enough nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. I'll continue to regularly apply biostimulants. And then I'll retest in a few months to see how we did. Now, since we are still in the heat of summer, I'm likely going to wait until the end of the month when temps fall and I can incorporate this as part of my core aeration and overseed application. Make sure you are subscribed so you are following along. I'll be preparing a video geared towards planning for the fall that will include addressing these action items as well as planning for core aeration and overseed. And there you have it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for joining.